Hi, welcome back to Jacob's Books Forum, where I'm Jacob, and you guys are watching the review and things for, uh, the review and things? No. The review for the Infernal Devices, which follows the Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. These are three novels set back in London, 1800 London, and during a battle between the Magister and, um, and the, the London Institute as they are paddling these things called clockwork creatures. It follows three main characters, Will, Jem, and Tessa, as they are all brought into this world of unimaginary things, Tessa being this creature of unknown, Will being the typical Jace bad boy, and Jem being addicted to a drug that is slowly killing him. So it followed by a great cast of characters and so forth. We'll talk about each book individually. I do want to mention that the reason why I look different and things is because that footage got deleted somehow. Don't really know, but it did. So it got deleted, and so now we're here reviewing the intro. So we're going to jump in after I've already talked about a few of the characters. Very sorry about that, but we'll jump back around to them eventually when we go into other ones. We do start with Clockwork Angel, and I just want to very quickly come in here just in case I didn't talk about at the end of the vlog, and I only talked about it in the beginning of the review, not vlog, review. Um, and that is, how do you guys want me to do the rest of the series? Um, the next big roundup will be City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and Simply Heavy Fire. I'm waiting for my audiobook, and then we'll start listening to that. And so that review will be coming, I would say, probably within the first week of November. And then we're going to be moving into the bound ups. Um, so we have the Mag Magnus Collection, we have Tales from the Shadow Hunters Academy, and then Tales from the Ghosts Market, I want to say, are the three. Um, and I was curious, do you want those individually reviewed because they're tiny stories inside one big book? Or do you want me to review all three as like a trilogy? Let me know in the comments down below. And then also when we get to the Dark Artifice and going forward, do you want those to be spoilerly reading vlogs or do you want those to be A3 books? Because like, I mean, these books, which I only have book number two at the moment, are huge. I mean, they're gigantic. And, um, and so I wasn't sure if you want me to review all three of these like together as a whole or separately um i don't mind doing either or the or so just let me know in the comments what you guys are feeling um by the time we get to chain of gold and the newest trilogy which is swallows magnus and alec over the course of the shadow hunters chronicles we will be doing those individual spoiler reading vlogs um because those are still coming out and so i want to do those individually I am reading Chain of Gold first, and then we're going to move into the Magnus and Alec. I know that they fall in different places throughout the series, and so I don't want to be spoiled, and I'd rather just read them right now. I mean, everything publication-wise, so why not just read those? Um, but that being said, how would you guys like to see the Bound Ups and then the Dark Artists? If you want to see them all as a trilogy, I'll do another three review after I read them. I do not mind whatsoever, but if you guys want to see a much more in-person reaction. I don't mind doing a spoiler reading vlog for each book as well. Let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you all. Well, actually, let's jump into the footage I had before, which is like 19 minutes long. This video is going to be very long, but that's okay. Let's jump into that. I don't know what happened there. Sorry, we're back. We also have a few other characters, such as Jessime, um, as she learns more about the Downwarders, the London Institute as well. Uh, James, or Jem, has a disease where he's addicted to a type of drug and that plays a huge part throughout all the books so it's very important detail um and then will also is running from horrible things it's not really mentioned too much here the action sequences were great um also i remember the deaths being in this one um a few main characters actually die at the end of this book which i remember very strongly i want to say one name is henry don't get me don't be mad at me if i'm wrong on that and also, um, obviously, Magnus does make an appearance as well, which is really, really cool. Um, I really liked the end. I really liked going into the club and trying to figure out the master. I really liked getting Nate back and figuring out Nate is a traitor. Um, I thought all that stuff was really, really well done. And I thought every twist really popped. And um, this is the only book in the whole in the whole trilogy that was really centered on one single thing. And so it had a very straightforward plotline. 
where it wasn't so scattered, which you're going to see is a becoming a huge problem with me and Cassandra Clare. I'm still loving the books, um, but it does make me choose storylines over storylines, but I enjoy certain people's I don't, other people's I do. This one also was only narrated by one narrator, um, which was a girl who I also very much enjoyed. Um, but overall, I really, really did like it, and I quite enjoyed it. It was a 5 out of 5 stars. I liked the ending, I liked the twist, it would make me very excited to read the sequel. So let's jump into the sequel, Clockwork Prince. Which is by far the lowest rated in the trilogy. It's a 4 out of 5 stars. Because I didn't really like it. I did like it to a certain aspect. Um, I got to the end and I really enjoyed the end. Um, I liked everything about Demon Pox. I liked everything. But I also, I have to mention, I really enjoyed this reading City of Lost Souls. Because there's a lot of references to this through City of Lost Souls. And so it was really, really fun seeing those references come to light. Um, Will is a very big character, or talked about a lot, in the Mortal Instruments, especially in that second trilogy. And so seeing him and Magnus work together so so hard here, um, with the fact of him trying to figure out what happened to him when he's younger, the curse that was put on him that was never an actual curse. These are all amazing things, and I very much enjoyed those story plot points. Um, I thought the action sequence here were not as well done. Um, once again, like I said, I do like the developments with the Lightwoods and how they became more into a fruition throughout the books and how they became much more entangled inside the institutes and stuff. I thought that was all very, very fascinating. I very much enjoyed every aspect of that. What else do we have here to talk about? Um, this is the book of where Will, I think, and Tessa actually do kiss the first time in this book. They kiss again in this book, and there was a lot more fire and passion. I also knew who uh, Tessa would eventually end up with. Um, I didn't know the fallouts of all the characters, but I did have an idea who Tessa would end up with. And so there's certain things that happen inside this book that would make me worrisome. Um, for instance, anything with Jim, as much as I think the love triangle, especially by the end of the series, was so well written because all the characters are just so likable um, and so charismatic that I never had a problem with it. I never really did truly believe that she loved Jim, though, past the simple fact that he was dying and that he cared, she cared for him in multiple ways in this book in particular. When we get to Clockwork Princess, I think that's a different story. But with this one in particular, um, I... I never truly had that feeling. I never truly felt like this person was truly in love with Jem. And so when she engaged with him, um, I think it was mostly our retaliation because of Will. And because she never thought she was going to get with Will and things. And so them getting married, um, which becomes a huge part of the next book, is all very fascinating. I just found it to be quite annoying. Um, when Will's sister shows up at the end of the book, I had no idea that's who that was since I guess... The name had never really resonated with me, and so the big twist never really stuck the landing either. There's obviously a few other things this book is, they're long, um, but those are the ones, those are the plot details since I have read it that stand out the most to me. Moving on to Clockwork Princess, which is relatively the newest book. I finished it in the beginning of October. Um, this is obviously book three, total spoilers. So the first 75% of this I was really disappointed with. Um, I was thinking it was going to be more like a 3 star, it was actually a 4.75 star, that's how amazing the ending of this book is, um, due to several things that happen in it. This is the, this is everything. Um, you know, I spoiled who Magister was, and now I don't even remember who Magister was. Oh, also, want to mention, her brother dies in this book. I forgot about that. Nate is dead. Oh, that's what the party and stuff, that was really good. That was a good scene. I read them so fast. Okay, um, so, like, once again, she is engaged, um, they do plan their wedding very soon, because Jim is dying, um, throughout most of this book, actually, there's a good portion of this novel, where you truly believe Jim is dead, Jim is not dead, but that, you don't find that out until the end, um, Tessa ends up trading herself in for, um, Jim's medicine, or his drug that the magister does take, I can't remember his name, I'm so sorry, such a huge spoiler too and I just cannot remember it damn it I'm looking um Mortmain there we go Mortmain um had taken it all Will goes off on his own little quest um to save Tessa because she is kidnapped 
in the beginning of this book after they feed the worm and the wedding and stuff. And so he goes after her. Um, she is tortured for a very long time and we figure out why he is doing a clockwork um, army, which I guess I've not mentioned at all. Clockwork creatures is a very big part of this. Um, she has a clockwork angel on her neck, which is featured right there on the cover of the first book. That's what Tessa wears. It's her protection angel, um, Alistair, which is very, very interesting because of later things that happen in the series that are spoilers that I won't mention um, that don't happen in this trilogy, but in other books. But with Alistair, Alistair is given to her by, a, it's like a birth gift. And um, so their relationship as he does come to full fruition and form in this novel several different times is that he is bound to her as no other angel has ever been bound to a human before or to a creature of her sorts before. And so that's all, I found all of that to be very fascinating. Anything with Mortbane, I found to be okay. I didn't really like him as a villain. And once again, Cassie Clare kills off her villain in a matter of seconds. And so it never really, we build up three books and it's never truly satisfying, I should say. Which is a problem. The ending itself is extremely satisfying, but that part is glossed over. I think it's in like three paragraphs and he's dead. There is a huge war. People do die, such as Henry. Um, or Thomas, I can't ever remember who the, maybe it's Henry Thomas, I'm not sure. Magnus builds his first portal, which is a huge deal, um, and so I really, really liked all the creations of that and figuring and seeing how that comes to fruition and why, so I very, very much enjoyed that. What else is there to talk about? Um, Jen turns into Zachariah, my mind was blown, it was one of my favorite, oh my god, it's probably like my favorite plot twist of the year. It was so cool. I loved it. I, I had no idea who it was. And as soon as I figured out that's who it was without giving context to Zacharias in future books um, or where he shows up again, it made me want to reread the whole series because I have a feeling I have a whole new... Because Jenna himself, once again, I never really did like him with Tessa because she does end up with Will. Um, and I knew that going in that she ends up with Will. Um, I never really liked them together. I think the love triangle, though, once again, because in this book, this is the first book in the whole entire trilogy where I could actually see her ending up with Jim and her actually falling in love with him. Um, she ends up falling in love and sleeping with, um, with Will, but, you yeah, know, it's fine. I do believe, um, a lot of people, and at least on Goodreads, was calling that a problematic scene because she finds out that her, her kind of husband not really her whatever with Jim is dead and she she sleeps with Will um I can understand that but also I don't know everybody deals with grief in their own way so I wasn't really taking that many problematic stances I would say these are the least problematic trilogy out of them all um we have some things to talk about in the next three books either way with uh Clockwork Angel though I just I mean Clockwork Princess I just absolutely loved it I adored it Everything about this I just found to be so cute and stuff. Um, I loved, I'm a, I'm a sucker, if you guys did not know this, to seeing people grow up. I'm one of those people who loves a 14-page epilogue. It's just the truth. I enjoy books where we're starting in the life cycle of a teenager and we end up in the life cycle of an elder. Like, those are my favorites. Truly favorites of a novel. I, it's become an obsession, to be honest with you. And so seeing Tessa go from 1800s or 1900s, truly don't know, I'm so sorry, um, to 2008, where the, where the mortal instruments do take place, and there's a whole scene at the very, very end. I am trying, hold on, they have a, um, they have a whole London thing, and I was wondering if, um, but I really like the epilogue. Um, the epilogue brought a lot of closure um, to a lot of different things. We get to see her grow old and happy with Will, her age, her never age, and her meet Zachariah every year in the same exact spot, and so they're forever together, which I really do love, and I do, there's a huge twist in this book by the end with Zachariah's character, which I'm honestly not going to spoil here, just in case you've never read the other ones. And I guess if you did read this book, him not being a silent brother 
by the end of this. It's huge spoilers for other books, so I find that to be very fascinating. I do understand why it was put in the context of the novel, though. So, read at your own risk. That's why I recommend reading them in um, publication order, because it's an experience. It's a lot, but it's an experience, and the characters are so different, I would say, in between the books. Um, I'd say Will is the closest character to Jace, you know. But there's that. Um, she turns into an actual angel. That was shocking. Did not see that one coming. Um, and so she is part god, I guess? I don't I didn't really... I, Tessa herself, her powers and her, her mindset and things, which was fully explained throughout this novel, I never truly understood. So if you guys have any better pointers, let me know in the comments down below. But overall, this is a 4.75. Now, if you get on Goodreads, it's going to say a 5. Because I figured it was a nice roundup. And um, there was a, just a few complaints and stuff. The first 75%, which I'm sure I would love now, now knowing the ending. But the first going through it was a, was a little bit of a tough challenge. Um, and so, didn't deserve a perfect score for me. But it's like my next favorite book. I'm not entirely sure if it goes... It would go Clockwork Angel, I think City of Lost Souls, and then Clockwork Princess. So I feel really bad for the Mortal Instruments. Hopefully City of Heaven Fire is better. Speaking of other books. Okay, so we're going to, uh, that's the whole review for them. Like I said, we have a four, we have a five, a four, and then a 4.75. I highly recommend this trilogy. It's phenomenal. Blah, blah, blah. You're here for it. Um, let's talk future installments of this thing. So the next thing, the next video you guys are going to see from me, which is in a few weeks because I lost the audiobook, is the reviews for City of Heavenly Fire, City of Lost Souls, and then City, oh, I told that, I said that wrong. Did I say that wrong? City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire, which is the final three books before we jump into 2012 with Lady Midnight and our The Lord of Shadows, those, the Dark Arbs, so that's what they're called. Um, and so my question to you, that's going to be a wrap up of three, uh, because I have not been reading those. I've not done spoiler vlogs for those. It wouldn't make sense. I want to get the first three trilogies out of the way. The Dark Arsis particular, those books are 800 pages a piece. Those are long, they're lengthy, and they're a lot. Um, and so my question to you, let me know in the comments down below if you guys care or not. Do you guys want me to read those as a spoiler reading vlog? having a non-spoiler review in the beginning and then a spoiler reading vlog with each book and then putting them out as I read them, um, which is fine. Or would you guys like a wrap-up review of all three? I just have a feeling there's a lot of context and stuff that I will forget and it's not going to be as initial of reactions, um, but let me know in the comments below how you guys feel about that. Um, Chain of Gold, for instance, will have its own spoiler reading vlog because there is no other ones it comes out in march of next year we will be reading it together but um and then the tales the trials of magnus and when magnus and um alec are off into with city of fallen angels those ones will also get their own individual reading I don't think the third one will be out for me to review them. They're shorter, so I could review them as a trilogy. But it depends on when I pick them up. I'm picking them up after Chain of Gold because I don't want any spoilers at all as they take place in different times during the uh, Mortal Instruments, the Shadowhunter series. And then also my next question is for the bind-ups. Um, I definitely know that I'm reading the Shadowhunter Academy. I'm reading all three bind-ups um, to get as immersed into this world as humanly possible as I really do enjoy the world a lot and it's the best one of the best parts of this whole thing and so we have the madness we have the tales from shadow hunter and then ghosts of ghost of the shadow market three different stories each one having characters that are main characters or plot bents or whatever important to other things going down the line and so my just simple question to you guys is do you guys want once again me to review those individually now that might that will probably just be like a straight up review it wouldn't be a, a, like a vlog or you me review those as a trilogy and review each one separately as we do here just because there's three i can review all three in a three-part video 
let me know in the comments down below. Also, if there's anything specific you want me to further explain, let me know, and I can explain it better in the comments. But guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please make a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below. Hit subscribe, and I'll see you on next time for another video.